Hi everybody, my name is Mili. I'm an event host and curator and also a TV personality. And you guys are watching Think TV. For Milo presents... So essentially, like I said, I'm an event curator, I'm an event MC, uh, I'm a TV personality. Do I do this um, for a long time? Kind of, yes and no. I've dabbled with a lot of things. Uh, I started as a dancer when I was in high school and it kind of uh, started with that. I did a movie when I was about 16 um, and then got into an interview because of that. And that's sort of how everything started uh, in terms of my radio career, which is how I started, and then went into TV, and then MCing, and sort of, um, yeah, kind of went from that, so that's uh, how it started as a dancer. So Milo Presents as initially was supposed to be an event uh, organizing or event curating company, and then it changed into sort of just me presenting, Milo's me, and sort of the sort of the different things that I wanted to do. So I facilitate a lot of conversations in terms of panel discussions and sort of social media discussions, like I said earlier, events and so on and so forth. So if you guys have seen my logo, um, so it's a woman with a head wrap, and she's like it's ideas sort of coming out of her. So the head wrap is open, and the idea is whatever I'm doing, sort of kind of goes out from that. So Milu presenting can mean anything. And in anything that I take up on, that's sort of the brand that I wanted to create is me facilitating all these things that I feel are necessary in our community and things that I find I'm interested in. So sort of what Milu presents is. I know it's kind of vague, but it kind of, for me, ties everything together. So like I said earlier, I started as a dancer. Um, I used to perform at every school that I possibly can and every, every, every event that I had at my school. Um, I used to love dancing, it used to be my life. My family, as you guys can imagine, was not very happy with it. Um, so by the time that I was in 16, there was a camp that I was a part of called Coach Carlos and he decided that he wanted to do a movie and we were part of it. Um, for a lot of you that have seen the movie, please don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> but, um, but needless to say, so, um, so I went for an interview at Afro FM with uh, Yemi and DJ Yemi and then a friend of mine by the name Dave or D um, called me after hearing the interview and was like, hey, I'm thinking of doing a college show on the radio and I think that you'd be a great host because you're so comfortable talking on the radio. And I said, okay. And we started a show called College City on Afro FM. And yeah, and then after that, it kind of went on. I went to EBC, did um, about three shows while I was there, went into TV, went into arts. And somewhere around that time, um, a friend of mine used to own this space called Via Via. And we wanted to really build up the space through entertainment because that's really how you bring people in. So we started doing events. Uh, and then I started sort of going on the mic and getting more comfortable. And then after that, that sort of took it's a life of its own, so I think that sort of what brought me here is trusting the process. Um, I didn't really plan it that way, but the universe, this is what was meant for me, and I truly believe that. And so in that process, it just found me, and I had to sort of let go and trust the process. So here we are now. <laughs> Nani, come in Bella Gedmame, said Onager, Rafton. Yem Chut Filagotini, Miamola Limbutan, Uncle Yetam Merto. And then Dutch, Aga Girtau Jalishunian. Can him fell the Gons Lam Mountain. Nani, Michut Kifluvi Chidella. Wust a slal of fresh timberna. Metu Bemetu Nutio fresh. Cafetan yo fretello, Yamimori for me now, fiber check and a pesam one a little bit. Belai dagmo sinna kalas la sai hona ekun tochar kela pesa mona lepet. Yego dala na garala kaba ke belai. Mel kam ko isa. Kasta damena kan kafin belai yano rosai bina. Iwat ka kasta damena freshkar mitchunat. some of the obstacles I faced internally and externally and how I overcame them. Um, I think internally is usually just trusting yourself, um, especially in the spaces that I've been, in terms of being so vocal on social media as well as on media entertainment and in things that people don't, like even for example, at me, I'm seeing it's not something that people are used to. 
uh, or a business really that existed at the level that I started doing it at. So it takes a lot of trusting yourself, uh, a lot of not doubting yourself, and consistently sort of being challenged by other people's expectations and remaining true to yourself and authentic to yourself. Um, externally, I think a lot of judgment, um, just something that I was used to, I think, as a kid, being a dancer, being in school, in Ethiopian society. I think you guys can all relate in terms of what the perception was. Um, but then even going forward, um, sort of going into TV, going into radio, a lot of people didn't trust what I was doing, including my family. It was more of like, this is cool, this is nice playtime, do your thing, and then let's go back to real life. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the obstacles that I faced was really just a matter of doubt. How I, how did I conquer them? I don't know, I just went for it. Sometimes I really do genuinely believe you gotta go for it and you gotta see it as it goes. Always life is about risks anyways. And I think the main question is what risks are actually valuable to you and what makes sense. And at that time that made sense to me. So I sort of just wanted to see it through and I'm grateful for the choices. The main thing that people crave is to feel heard, to feel seen, to feel loved. And a lot of our experiences are the same. And so if we are really able to be open with each other and can be less judgmental of each other, then we can really learn a lot from each other. Because like I said earlier, a lot of that shared experience, shared reality, our life, our communities is really the same and intertwined. And so sometimes the way we give other, people's free other people freedom is by sharing our own stories. The courage for me comes from my family. I was raised by a lot of very, very strong women um, that consistently told me to take up my own space, to speak my mind, to have my own opinions, and um, to stand in my truth. And despite um, our society, um, especially in the past, I think that is changing now more because I do want to give gratitude where gratitude should be given. And I think that society is changing more and more now. But for a lot of when I grew up, a lot of sort of the notion for women was to sort of shut up and take your place, you know? And so I was raised with a lot of, lot of strong women, a uh, family of 10, like six of them being women, all of them really reminding me that I should be my own self and I shouldn't be scared to stand in my truth and say what I need to say. And I feel like that's an important lesson for me. And I feel like that's something that I really want to pass on to my daughter as well, because as women, we are nurturers, we are mothers, we are sisters, we are givers. And so a lot of what we have to say is very important. And I feel like a lot of that can be shut down in societies like ours. And so I think a lot of that courage came from them. And I'm so grateful to this day. And I hope that I can be able to spread that to a lot of young women as well. Um, I remember once, I guess the most craziest one I went through was this man created five different accounts um, to harass me. So he'd like, he'd create one account, harass me, close it, create another account, harass me. And you, you can tell from just what was written to how he was saying it to the words he was using. Um, it was sort of like a story that just sort of continued itself. So it was five different accounts. But at the end of it, uh, when I was working at EBC at the time, he said that um, he had followed me and that I'd like, I think I gained weight or lost weight, something to that, uh, something to that accord, and then threatened to pour acid on my face. Um, and then I backtracked and I had like screenshot a lot of those uh, messages. And so the first account he had his picture on and he didn't realize that. And so I took a screenshot of the picture and I sent it to him. I was like, you know, I know who you are. Obviously completely backtracked, kept on saying like, you know, I have a problem. I should seek help, I have anger issues, so on and so forth, uh, because now I've discovered who he is. But um, the reason that I brought it up is there's a lot of risks in terms of talking about certain things in front of um, spaces like social media or media or so on and so forth because you are exposed to the public and especially for me people know where I work where I'm at at different times uh, what events I'm hosting and so it's not even just that it's cyber bullying it has an actual effect in my real life anyone can find me I leave events at like 3 a.m. sometimes 10 p.m. sometimes sometimes I have to use a cab to go home and so there are times where it's extremely scary um, and I'm grateful for my friends and a lot of people, my support system, that make sure that I'm safe and, you know, try and pick me up and take me home or, you know, make sure that there are events that I'm at. But it does take thick skin and it does take knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because if it has no purpose, then there's no point of going through all of this, right? I could just be comfortable at home <laughs> without having to worry about anything. So there has been a lot of discouragement. And, but I also realized that 
If you're not saying something important, the people wouldn't be coming at you. If you were not saying anything relevant, the people wouldn't be coming at you. There's a reason that people come at me. It's because whatever I'm saying is triggering them in one way or the other, or is sort of making them question certain things that they've believed to be true, and now they have to question themselves. And so, yeah, I guess it comes with the territory, and that's something that I've learned to accept. Filler Mandan. Fillerroch, but a layu yes ponge murtus, emurtumaga zek and a madre game yaschulu, but added the ragarushnacho. Nagarin, so say neocal. Filler, weim calcium carbonate, but balamita work of chemical, Kaliruch chemical which can see the valley. He asked, You can't serve night a layu wish to chest. Wagalamak and Nessibal, the fresh sponges was wine at Marzama chemical which in the Micha Marita workal. In Yagin, Nim minus filler and the tech. Metal percent ratonate a beck and not as garami sponge in number teller. I did. But a kicker. You cast a damn as sponge fabrica, with a gabia catacalacal bet kizian soto, lala foot ham stamatat, and a zinc chemical fillers and tatakman and nocum. On Bazimas Natachin and Nanto Astanano. You think on me Masaya Marco Chachin Babogovnet, the unit to Nimescrew, with a lack a what, and quandanamatachu. In terms of me being a bridge uh, between Ethiopia and other African countries, um, first and foremost, I really want to give a big shout out to Travel Sultan and our African Explorer uh, team, because the whole idea behind that is Africans traveling within Africa or all over together and seeing the world together. And so the reason I brought that up is because that's how I was able to travel to a lot of the African countries that I did. And in terms of really what I saw has really brought me back to my identity as an African, as an Ethiopian, and as a black person. And sometimes I think that for a lot of Ethiopians, that's something that we lack. I think that we really need to look back at our history. I think that we really need to examine our African identities because as a community, sometimes we lack that connection. Um, as a society, sometimes the way we speak about the continent and other Africans is really, really, really troublesome. And I really need people to just stop and check that um, because I've also experienced it while traveling. And I think that as anything, if you were really to stop and travel and meet people from all over the continent, you would find so many more similarities that you find our, our differences within the continent. And yeah, I really look forward to having more of these conversations with other countries, um, having more events that are centered around our African identity, African music, African culture, African food and its celebration and that connection because that is something I'm so grateful for that's happened the past two years that it's really helped me grow as a person. Um, countries like Nigeria and Congo and Tanzania and Kenya and Uganda, all of them blew my mind and really like to even see the progress that's been made and why that progress has been made can teach us so much about who we are and how to progress as Ethiopians that it's really mind boggling um, some of the conversations that we have as Africans here in Ethiopia. So yeah, I don't know how much of a, a bridge that I am, but that's one thing that I'm really seeking to do more of. I want to have more events going forward that center um, our African identities in terms of what we're providing. And I also want more people to come and travel with us because you don't know until you see it. And instead of you traveling to Bangkok or Dubai or you know somewhere in Europe every other summer, come, come and travel with us. We're going to Morocco, we're going to Ghana, we're going to Senegal. Come and see the beauty that is our continent because God, we have so much to give and it's so beautiful. It sounds like a, a very childish answer, <laughs> but honestly, my heart inspires me. Um, I'm very drawn to what fuels me and what fuels my heart. And so that's why I think I've done so many different things in the short life that I've lived, um, that I've been in so many different sectors and done so many different jobs. I'm really interested in growing and learning and building. I'm interested in community. I'm interested in finding more and more people to talk to and like create with and build with and so yeah that really is what inspires me and what pushes me to do what I do um, you know like I said I'm a facilitator that's how I see myself I facilitate conversations I facilitate you know people coming together and creating things and so I'm just there for the journey 
I'm just there to see what beauty we can create because I do feel like, you know, we're gonna live this life and we're gonna go through this life either way. And I feel like there's so much beauty that we can put into life and this world and the spaces that we live in. And I'm just always ready to meet people that are willing to do that. And so thankfully I'm surrounded by so many really dope people um, that continue to push me and that continue to sort of show me different ways to do things and different ways to create and different ways to be better and live free and live happy. And so, yeah, that's really the journey that I'm on. Uh, I'll say two things. One is be daring. You have nothing to lose. To be honest, people will judge you either way. People will talk about you either way. People gonna look at you sideways either way because sometimes people just don't have anything better to do. And they're looking at you more than they're looking at themselves. So whatever it is that you're scared of, just Close your eyes, take a deep breath and go for it. Uh, what's next for Milu and what's Milu presenting? What's Milu presents presenting? Uh, so what's next is uh, I really want to start an event series that I've been working on and I'm excited to bring to you guys. It's really about uh, our culture as Africans, around music, around food, around dance, and so much more. I can't tell you guys exactly the name, but please make sure that you guys look forward to that. Um, for all my traveler friends or people that want to explore traveling, please make sure you all check us out as well because we do have a lot of uh, trips planned with Travel Suits on this year, so don't miss your chance. And apart from that, one last thing would be uh, is my podcast. And I am working on it. Um, like I said earlier, I've been wanting to take time, but it is on its way. So look out for that as well. And uh, thank you. God bless y'all.